you know, it's pretty readable. It's not bad. I wouldn't necessarily want to author in something like this. But even if you're looking at the underlying text files, you can see what's going on here. And this is probably a good point to point out that one of the important things about DITA, specifically, and XML in general, is that the content is stored as text, as XML files, which are text. What this means is that anytime you want to open up your XML files, anytime you want to take a look at them, you can, in fact, uh, look at them and work through them and do whatever you need to do. So you don't necessarily have to have a proprietary tool to work through that. I wanted to go through some of the concepts that are in DITA. Topics, map files, content references, and finally specialization, which I've mentioned several times. The key concepts that you have We'll start with topics, which I've kind of talked about. So a topic is typically a page to a page and a half. A topic is typically going to require you to write in a modular way. It's going to require you to think about consistency amongst your topics, because you can't get away with writing a chapter that hangs together as a whole. You have to write the, ch the topics and make those all make sense. And then finally, you're going to have what's really a writing challenge rather than a technology challenge. Um, writing topics correctly is, um, is, you know, a, it's really a writing difficulty rather than a technology difficulty. So the idea of writing in topics is not really a DITA problem. It's a writing challenge. Okay. But, again, you have to be writing topics. You have to be writing topic-oriented stuff. And if you're not doing so, you're going to have some issues. I mentioned the map files earlier. They are going to allow you to create your topic listing, to organize your topic sequentially and hierarchically. It becomes a basis for creating books, help, and other deliverables. Um, organizing map files is not so difficult, especially if you've worked in any sort of help authoring tool or even something like a FrameMaker book. The concepts there are really quite similar in terms of arranging, organizing, sequencing, and setting up a hierarchy for the various pieces and parts that you're putting in. This is a, the source code for a map file. I wanted to give you a look at that. So not too bad. You've got the XML declaration at the top and the doc type, which, as I said, you can pretty much ignore. Then you've got the map itself and the title. So up at the top, this, would, this zoo policies that you see up there is going to be the title of the map file, which means then the title of the document, of the deliverable, whether it's help or a book or whatever. We've got a section called Topic Meta, which allows us to put in things like the author or authors when something was created, when something was revised. Uh, there's additional information that can go in there, like uh, copyright, those types of things. The topic refs, then, this is your actual table of content. So I have a topic ref to animal nutrition. And then you'll notice indented under that, I have A, B, C, and D animals that are subsets of the animal nutrition section. I've indented them here so that you can see what's going on. But actually, what it really is, is that because the topic ref for animal nutrition is opened and then not closed until five lines later, everything that's nested inside topic ref is a part of the animal nutrition section. And similarly, we have a top-level visitor behavior, which contains adults and children as topics. Those hrefs that you see in there are pointers that point to files that are you know, where you expect them to be. So, you go off and point to aardvark.xml, that will be then be slurped in when you generate this map, or when you generate output from this map, it'll be slurped in and it will be addressed at that point. Conrefs or content references are critical in DITA. These are a very um, useful kind of feature and, and to a certain extent unique. I showed you the aardvark.xml file earlier and noted that there was a note in there that said ID equals no feeding. That ID equals no feeding can now be reused in other documents. So if you look in the second file, in the baboon file down there, 
under note, it says CONREF equals aardvark.xml pound aardvark slash no feeding. That CONREF piece points to the note. It addresses the note that's in the aardvark.xml file. So as a result, when you output baboon.xml, what you're going to get is the sentence, do not feed animals, scraps, snacks, or people food in that location. And if you think about this, you could see where when you go in and you set up a CONREF, you could reuse notes that are um, repeated throughout your document. So if you have a warning that you want to repeat over and over again and you want to make sure that the warning is consistent, then you could use CONREFs to set it up and to reference this other piece. So CONREFs allow you to reference chunks of another document. They are similar, if you're familiar with the FrameMaker text insets, they are similar to that idea. CONREFs, though, are typically used to reference paragraphs or even subparagraphs. If you want to reference topics, you would typically do that in the map file and not in the CONREFs, although it could be done that way as well. So you have a map file. Of course, you can set up multiple map files and then point to the same topics over and over again to reuse topics. You have CONREFs to allow you to reference paragraph level or smaller content. I've already mentioned specialization several times. Specialization is a concept in DITA that allows you to create additional elements without breaking the processing in the Open Toolkit. Now, the problem we've always had is, let's say that DITA gives you a note, but you actually need a caution, and a caution is not provided in DITA by default. In the olden days, what you would do is you would create a new caution element, but then when you go to generate your HTML, your HTML processor would say, well, I don't know what to do with caution. You created this new tag, and I don't know what to do with it. When you do a specialization, what you say is caution is a specialization or a child of note. And because caution is a child or a specialization of note, when you go to process caution, your system says, oh, I don't know about caution. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a child of note. OK, I know what to do with notes. So specialization then allows you to create additional elements and have them automatically be processed and understood by the Open Toolkit. You can certainly add custom processing in the Open Toolkit for your cautions. But if you don't, the Open Toolkit will gracefully degrade and still deal with your specialized elements. So that is why specialization is important. Now, there are a couple of different ways of getting from basic DITA to the structure that you might want. So you have basic DITA, but you say, you know, it's not quite right. And there are basically three ways that you can address customizing DITA to what you need. Customization, subsetting, and specialization. So let's take a look at customization and subsetting and see what we've got there. When you customize, what you do is you start with DITA, which is the content in the larger black oval. Those are all DITA elements that are provided out of the box. And I look at them and I say, well, in addition to that, those are all nice. But in addition to that, I need a warning, I need a caution, and I need a sidebar element. So I'm just going to add them. I'm just going to add on, sidecar on these additional elements, which means, of course, that the DITA Open Toolkit will break when I generate my output. But I'll just go in there and customize the Open Toolkit to address these elements. This is a legitimate approach. It does not make the DITA designers happy, but it is a legitimate way of doing things. And it is fine. The problem you're going to run into with customization uh, or the, the, the case where you might want to use customization is when specialization is not going to work for some reason. Or we had an example of a customer who had some DITA content, some topic-oriented modular content, but they also had information that was, um, it was actually semiconductor register documentation that was being generated, and it had its own structure, own pretty complex structure. And their decision was that they didn't want to try and specialize DITA to support that. What they did instead was they added it on. So that, for example, you had a DITA topic, you had a concept, a reference, and a task, and then you had something like registry entries, which was a topic level element. And all the elements that went with registry entries just got put into that registry entries, and they just added it into DITA. That would be a good example of customization. 